Hello, I'm John Sargent and welcome to Argumental, the show where the brightest brains in comedy debate the biggest issues facing mankind. Can Gordon Brown save the world? Should Britain join the Euro? And why did I drop out of Strictly Come Dancing? <laughs> Here to argue such crucial topics and others like them are our teams. In the red corner with Marcus Brigstock, it's Mark Watson. <laughs> And joining Rufus Hound on the blue team, please welcome Hugh Dennis. <laughs> Tonight we kick off with a big issue which, according to the media nowadays, is the most precious commodity there is. I'm talking about fame. The world of A-list, B-list, Russell Brand's to-do list, wags and wannabes. It's all about premieres, publicists, paps and PR where the shortcut to notoriety is flashing your gusset in a taxi or being George Best's son. <laughs> but the issue I want the teams to argue over is this. There's more to life than being famous. Proposing this statement, on behalf of the blue team, it's Rufus Hound. Fine! I want to live forever. I want to learn how to fly. Hi. I'm Rufus Hound, and over the next couple of minutes, I'm going to tell you why there's more to life than being famous. Let's look at some famous people. Gandhi furthered the cause of a free India and the notion of non-violent demonstration. Isaac Newton invented the cat flap and apple heading. <laughs> Russell Brand is a movie star and an award-winning stand-up comedian who sold hundreds of thousands of DVDs to an adoring fan base. But when he goes home at night, who does he share all that with? Is there a wife asleep at home whose slumberous frame he can regale with tales of success? No. Instead, there'll be three or four 20-something blonde girls lezzing it up while he watches and picks a favourite. He barely even knows their names. <laughs> Do you think he's happy? <laughs> of course. He's ecstatic. <laughs> I mean, he's got an erection, which... By this point, he's using a sort of conductor's baton <laughs> in a room full of numbered girls. <laughs> one, two, one, two, one, one, <laughs> two, three, two, three, one, three, two, three, one, three, two, one, one, two, three, four. <laughs> But it's not the fame that's made Russell happy. It's the banging, the four blonde chicks, that's making him happy. <laughs> fame is just the key that's opened that door. And at the end of the day, you can't have sex with a key. <laughs> Vote blue. Next up, opposing Rufus for the red team, it's Mark Watson. So, as I understand it, Mr Hound uh, tried to prove his argument by basically miming Russell Brand having sex with whores to the tune of our, national, our once great national anthem. Um, <laughs> now, the fact is, you might be um, inclined to agree with him at first. Of course, superficially, there is more to life than fame, but these days, increasingly, actually, there's not more to life than fame, because unless you're famous, you get constantly screwed over. I want to be famous. I'm fed up of no-one knowing who I am. <laughs> Celebrities do have the things that we all want. They have money. They have sex. Rufus argued that Russell Brand isn't happy, and then sort of argued that he is happy. The fact is, whether Brand is happy or not, he's got the option of having sex with four blondes. Realistically, I don't have that option. And I wouldn't want to. I'm not married. Hang on, I am married. What's this mean? This means you are married. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I do hope that bit doesn't go out. Um... <laughs> ah, I was married. Um... <laughs> Celebrities can get away with anything. Celebrity Ashley Cole cheated on his celebrity wife, Cheryl Cole. He was so drunk, he was sick during... And I quote, he was so drunk, this is in the newspaper, he was sick all over the cream carpet. He had some mouthwash and we carried on. Right, how else would you... I know, it's disgusting, a cream carpet. Right, uh, <laughs> what decade is this, the 80s? And yet, because you're a celebrity... Now, again, I don't want to behave like that, but nonetheless, celebrities do have a licence which we, as normal people, don't. I mean, look at John. And I, I'm not going to get on one of these programmes like Dancing on Ice or whatever John's one was called, Dancing on the Normal Floor. So, uh... <laughs> 
And I resent the fact that not people like, not John, but people like John are made into instant celebrities and somehow regarded as more important. Celebrity is a fact of life now. There's nothing we can do about it. The only way we can protect ourselves from being oppressed by the inanity of celebrity is to become celebrities. So being famous might not be all there is in life, but it's bloody nice. So ladies and gentlemen, vote in favour of the red team. Thank you. Right, thank you, Mark. Marcus and Hugh, do you want to join in this one? The only people who seem to think that fame is not worthwhile are people like us who are a little bit famous. People who are properly famous, real celebrities, big celebs, know that it opens doors for you. You get upgrades every time you fly, you can walk into any restaurant, get a table. Most of the time you don't have to pay for stuff, they just give you things for free. Right? And people who aren't famous see that and think, well, that looks nice, I'd like a bit of that. People like the well, blue team, ladies and gentlemen, who are embittered by it. They're famous enough for it to I'm be inconvenient from time to time. I'm not embittered by it at all. You are. I I'm saw not. him. A man My... asked him for an autograph, right? He was coming out of Outnumbered. You know who I am. sitcom with children, <laughs> right? With children. And a man came up, asked him for an autograph. He stabbed him in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. And also, I have been upgraded. Not on an aeroplane. I have been upgraded on a train. I was travelling on a train... <laughs> 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 This is true. I was travelling on a train to the south, down to Portsmouth. It was quite late at night. I was sitting in uh, Standard, where I always sit, mm. and the guard looked at my ticket and he looked at me and he went, Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and he made me sit in first class. <laughs> how you shit see, is that? <laughs> you see, that's how good your life could be. <laughs> The reason was he was trying to stop you from being stabbed, probably. If you're yeah. going on a train late at night to Portsmouth, you've got bigger problems than which class you're in. <laughs> <laughs> we need to find out whether there's more to life than being famous, right? So, the only way that fame exists is amongst a sentient populace. So, in other words, there has to be life in order for there to be fame. Therefore, there cannot be fame without there being life. Ergo, there has to be more to life than there can possibly be to being famous. Yeah, We've won. Fine. Hmm. <laughs> okay, we'll go on with the rest of the show, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I can do this another way if, if that was a bit wordy for people and, and uh, the train of logic fell down. They'll definitely it... enjoy being patronised like that, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's people like you that are ruining museums. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Last someone's told us who's ruining museums. <laughs> I, even I don't understand that. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. So, is there more to life than being famous? It's time for the studio audience to decide who made the best case. If you think it was Marcus and Mark, hold up your red card. And if you think it was Rufus and Hugh, hold up the blue card. Vote now. <laughs> so it looks like a victory for the red team. Well done, Marcus and Mark. Next up is our head-to-head -head debate. One person starts the debate, but every time I press the buzzer, their opponent takes over to argue the opposite, OK? Marcus and Hugh, you're up for this one, and the topic I'd like you to debate is this. You can't beat public transport. And, Marcus, I'd like you to start us off in favour of the statement. You can't beat public transport, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Of course you can't. Hugh knows that, we know that. It doesn't matter how much they put the prices up, we love public transport so much, we just keep on doing it. £800 for a single fare to Manchester? Of course I'll pay it. It's public <laughs> transport. It's brilliant. I've worked with you many, many times, Marcus, mm. and I know that you are so posh that you arrived here today in a sedan chair. Yeah. <laughs> and when you're not on the sedan chair, you are in a golden carriage pulled by winged horses. Um, my sedan chair is open to the public whenever I'm not in it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is a form of public transport that provides employment for four or eight people, depending on what size of lunch I've enjoyed. Now, uh, <laughs> you try travelling on public transport at the weekends. Don't, what does it always say? Engineering works. And I say, engineering does not work. Of course it doesn't work. <laughs> if it did work, I wouldn't be standing here waiting for this sodding train. <laughs> But you stand there and you wait and you enjoy one of the great moments in life where human beings truly connect, the mutual tut. There is nothing that makes us <laughs> more British than hearing, we're currently uh, 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 ladies and gentlemen, and seeing 40 people all at once go, huh? <laughs> <laughs> when you travel on the tube or on a packed train, ladies, you're not paying extra to be frotted by a Hungarian plumber. Uh, That's all. <laughs> 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 That is the problem, being frotted, and I'm not quite sure I know what that means. <laughs> it's this. 
being rubbed up and down by a slightly overweight man in a suit. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn you, son! Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Thank you both, Rufus and Mark. Do you want to jump onto this particular bandwagon? Let's, uh, let's just make a note of all the millionaires who travel on public transport. Uh, Robinho, the footballer, recently went on a bus. It was in the papers. Bon Jovi, they tour in a bus. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, loads of rock and roll stars go on a bus when they could. Yeah. Right? You know. Bon Jovi do travel in a bus. And you know what? They're only halfway there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bon Jovi song was actually inspired by buses. Well, so that's right. It, we wouldn't Living have the great chorus. Because anybody who's ever used a bus will know there's nothing worse than being in Croydon thinking, well, this was meant to be in Victoria 25 minutes ago, but now I'm in Croydon, a.k.a. <laughs> the 19th circle of yeah. hell. <laughs> there aren't 19 circles of hell. There are seven. Carol. <laughs> there are seven circles of hell and eight if you include the circle line. <laughs> Public transport should be fantastic, but simply isn't, and that's the great tragedy of it. Yeah, but you can't beat it. There isn't a better system. You can beat it. You can beat it at a slow walk. <laughs> <laughs> you can beat it by crawling. I could beat the bus that goes up Oxford Street if I slithered on my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. So, can you beat public transport? It's time for the studio audience to decide mm. who made the best argument. It's red cards for Marcus or blue cards for Hugh. Vote now. <laughs> So, a blue majority there. Well done, Hugh. <laughs> it's often said there's always a lunatic on every bus. Personally, I'd never seen one. A fact, I yelled at a policeman as he shielded my genitals with his helmet and escorted me off for number 43. <laughs> Join us after the break, where, amongst other things, we'll be finding out if the French are better than the Germans. Don't go away. Welcome back to Argumental, the show that sparks more hot-tempered hostility than a copy of the News of the World landing on Gordon Ramsay's doormat. <laughs> our next round is called The Slideshow, where our teams illustrate their argument using a series of pictures which they've never seen before. Mark, I'd like you to start by arguing that the French are better than the Germans. And here's your first picture. Away you go. <laughs> Of course, the French are better than the Germans. That's been proved by, uh, well, wars, for a start. Um, <laughs> but it's also amply illustrated by this magnificent piece of architecture. What's the German equivalent of the Eiffel Tower? There isn't one. Why? Because the French are better than the Germans. The Germans build flat buildings that don't look anything like penises. Boring. Um, <laughs> of course, the French are better than the Germans. Um, look at that potato. Does it look appetising? Mm, no, it's a German potato. That's why. <laughs> French potatoes are sexy potatoes. They're shaped like women and they taste... Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, they taste like women. It's too late to go back on that. Well, it's not actually true. Um, but if you really want proof that French are better than the Germans, take a look at this next picture. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Prince Philip, the worst he can say about the French is that they eat snails or something. He can say much worse things about the Germans. Basically, they will always be racists, so the fewer people there are for us to be really racist to, the better. The Germans are an easy target. Um, we still hear people say things like two world wars and one world cup. What have the Germans got to come back with? A very good economic recovery, which is uh, <laughs> not a particularly exciting chant. <laughs> This is this picture, if anything, summarises Germany. This is how the Germans sell their Rubik cube. In fact, it's already done more efficient that way, right? <laughs> in France, a Rubik cube is so fun that you don't even get to buy it in its packaging. You have to get it out of a river. That's how crazy France is. <laughs> France is bonkers. We love bonkers people. We've given the French a hard time. It's time to back them. Vote for the French. Vote for us. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Hugh, I'd like you to argue the opposite, that the Germans are better than the French. Here's your first picture, and off you go. There are two words to explain why the Germans are better than the French. Michael Schumacher. Michael Schumacher and what he stands for? Build quality, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Build quality. Look at the chin on that. <laughs> this man didn't just fall apart like his French-Canadian, Frenchified French rival, Jacques Villeneuve and just win the World Championship once. No, he won seven World Championships. And how did he do it? Because he exercised those tremendous German virtues of driving the fastest car <laughs> and being better at cheating. 
<laughs> what can I say? <laughs> that is a German crotch. <laughs> that crotch has been built in Munich or Stuttgart to exact German specifications. <laughs> Other examples of German build quality are these. <laughs> They're peas. <laughs> French peas are useless. Look at the size of those. German pea is the size of a fist, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> German pea. You could feed a family of eight for four months on one <laughs> German pea. <laughs> what the f*** are they? <laughs> is the question. Lederhosen, ladies and gentlemen, the Germans, their attention to detail is so great that they are the only people in the world who have developed shorts that you need to polish. <laughs> Leather shorts that require dubbing and think how much fun that is if you are still wearing them. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Germans, the Germans and their superiority over the French. Thanks, you, Marcus and Rufus. Do you want to join in this one? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Germans are superior to the French. Ruthless efficiency of the German will get the job done, whereas a sort of laissez-faire attitude of your Frenchman will not. But ruthless German efficiency didn't win the day, did it? Germany has never been more efficient than when the Third Reich were running it, and they came, at best, third, if you include Japan. <laughs> <laughs> the French have taken a kicking for years for having surrendered, but I tell you what, if you've been to Paris or anywhere, particularly in northern France, it's a wonder what surrender does for the architecture of a place. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> All still standing. They had the good sense to go, no, please, we value these things. They are wonderful. Don't blow them up. We let you come in, and then the English and Americans, they fix things, we eat cheese, while you all piss off. <laughs> <laughs> so you're backing, people. you're backing art over backbone. What if British people have Hang been on, like sorry, that? Hang on, sorry, you are just referring to the Third Reich and the rise of Nazi Germany as backbone, are you? <laughs> <laughs> just so we're absolutely clear. They were Nazis, oh, they were bloody determined. Yeah, you know, exactly. I'm not making a value judgment here, I'm just saying if you look at the fact yeah. that <laughs> things got done, they did. Can I, a can lot I make them... a value... <laughs> can I make a value judgment? and say <laughs> they weren't good things that they did. <laughs> no, you can say that, and I would, of course, agree. That the French are, in fact, better and nicer than the Germans. No! <laughs> the, the, the ability of your German to get things done your is German. superior <laughs> to that of your Frenchman. The, the Germans are no longer Nazis. I don't know if you've got the memo. We are all allowed to move on now. If you were in a fight in this day and age, with a modern German or a modern Frenchman, I know who I'd want in my corner, and that's why the Germans are better than the French. Yeah, but we don't really want to be in a fight, to be perfectly honest with you, Rufus. <laughs> we want to hang out with cool French people in berets with long bread and camembert. I <laughs> happy don't days. think they exist. Du vin, du pain, du bon sein. Wolfsburg <laughs> durch Technik. <laughs> Papa, Nicole. <laughs> Right, so are the French better than the Germans? It's time to ask the audience who made the best argument. Can I just say before they do it, good luck. <laughs> Vote now. It's a clear victory for the Reds. Well done, Mark Watson. You <laughs> dans votre visage. <laughs> Of course, it's one of life's ironies that while France is the nation of love and romance, it's the Germans who've given us the best porn. <laughs> In this next round, our teams will be tackling a topic of huge national importance. It's a great English Sunday tradition, like the motorway queue, the Yorkshire pudding, not going to church and forgetting Tesco shuts at four o'clock. <laughs> but it's sadly under threat. What am I talking about and is it worth saving? Let's find out with the help of the Greensleeves Morris Men. Well done, lads. Right, 
Marcus, you're up first, and the statement I'd like you to argue is, Morris dancing is cool. <laughs> Off you go. Ladies and gentlemen, Morris dancing is cool. Of course it's cool. Look at these guys. <laughs> they look awesome. A lot of people, like Hound, sit and wait to be told what cool is. They wait for it to be defined by what's on TV or who's wearing what or what clever marketing man rams some bullshit down your throat. These people don't care about any of that. They're cutting their own cool, right, guys? Who's with me? Give me a jangle. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's how they roll. Listen, these people are so cool, they have chosen to do an activity that never takes place more than four yards away from the back door of a pub. Give me a jangle. <laughs> <laughs> this hat here, under here, full of ale. It's the only way they could get these people, including tall crocodile freak person, <laughs> to come out. They're cutting their own cool. They don't need some magazine or TV show to do a feature on Morris dancing. They know what they want to do. They woke up one morning, pissed, presumably, <laughs> and thought, I know what I'm going to do today. I'm going to wear bells, I'm going to carry a stick, and I'm going to prance about, because they're cutting their own kind of cool. These men in the communities that they live are celebrities. They're local celebrities. And this is what is cool where these people live. Let me tell you, local celebrities, hot for it. Every weekend, getting some. <laughs> Getting some, getting some, getting some, getting some, getting some, getting some. <laughs> I'm saying you're cool. You know you're cool. I think we all know a vote for the red team is how these boys roll, right? Give me a jingle. Red team! Thanks, Marcus. Rufus, now it's your turn to oppose the motion. <laughs> Here I am in a studio on London's South Bank with an audience full of young, trendy, hipster urbanites. And I'm supposed to try and convince you people that somehow Morris dancing isn't cool. I'm on a hiding to nothing. <laughs> right now, you're probably looking down at your calloused hands. I know that the love of those sticks and that dancing around has given you those sores. <laughs> Hours of practice that you've put in to try and climb that mountain. That a quick whip round with a stick up the Cotswolds is... <laughs> probably the greatest joy you're likely to experience. But all I'm asking, just for one moment, just consider this, <laughs> that maybe... <laughs> Morris dancing might not be cool. <laughs> Just asking for a moment here in which you maybe open your minds, put the knives down, right? I can see the hatred, the confusion in your eyes. <laughs> but just allow yourself to imagine... What if? <laughs> what if this isn't cool? <laughs> I'm not saying the Emperor's got no clothes. Just saying maybe he does have some clothes and he's dressed like a twat. <laughs> Vote blue. Thanks, Rufus, and thank you to the Green Sleeves Morris Man. <laughs> what a fine bunch, you know. Aren't they wonderful? We dance, we've got to stick together. <laughs> Mark and Hugh, would you like to add to this debate? Well, I think it's, it's become much easier now that they've actually gone and we can... <laughs> <laughs> the first thing is the bells. You know, animals like cows, for example, in, in Switzerland or something, will wear bells so the farmers will know where they are. Uh, Morris men, I have on very good authority, wear bells so the sheep... <laughs> know where the men are. You see what I'm saying? And it's not right and it certainly isn't cool. <laughs> I'll go further. I would say that it is the least stealthy of the martial arts. <laughs> what are the sticks for? They're, they're essentially for this. Do you know, if all, the, 
Of all the things that have been done that might insult a Morris man, that has got to be it. <laughs> Did you see those dudes when they came out? It was like, yeah, because that is what 18 pints of scrumpy will do to a man. <laughs> Marcus's impression. Oh, it's what are the sticks for? Oh, it's like this. And scene. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can say that that's not cool because of what Marcus no, said. Yeah. Those are people who are so at home with themselves that they're prepared to risk the cruel mockery of people like you, mm. implying they might occasionally have sex with sheep just because they can dance. If everyone who danced also had sex with sheep, well. Mm. Um. <laughs> OK, that's it. So, is Morris dancing a cool pastime? Is that a yes or a hey, nonny, nonny, no? <laughs> it's up to our studio audience to decide. Red for Marcus and blue for Rufus. Vote now. <laughs> so, it looks like a win for the Blues. Well done, Hugh and Rufus. <laughs> They've convinced the audience that Morris dancers are not cool. I quite agree. I think they're hot. <laughs> Time now for the final round, a last chance for our teams to show just how argumental they really are. I'm going to show them a series of images. All they have to do is suggest an argument to go with them. OK, here's your first one. <laughs> That's an argument for arsenic. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's an argument that bangers should actually go bang. <laughs> <laughs> with sufficient force to remove faces. <laughs> <laughs> is it an argument for Gary Rhodes' internal monologue being this? Now, I know my dad taught me it was never all right, but maybe today, just today, I'll punch a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Next picture. This is an argument for putting Damien Hurst through some sort of chemical attack. The theory that Elton John really does get very, very upset when David Furnish farts. <laughs> I think it's an argument for looking fabulous, dirty bomb or not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. It's an argument against the new remake of JFK, certainly. <laughs> I mean, that's bad casting, isn't it? <laughs> Is this uh, an argument against Queen Camilla? I think it's definitely an argument for always carrying spare veal in the back. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that's it. So, for the final time, it's down to our studio audience to decide who made the best case. Vote now. <laughs> so, I can tell you that the red team have won the round, which means this week's winners are the red team. Well done, Marcus Brigstock and Mark Watson. Commiserations to Rufus Hound and Hugh Dennis. That's all we've got time for. Good night. In the mood to carry on the argument? Well, you can. Carry on the argument at joindave.co.uk by reading exclusive argumental blogs written by Rufus Hound and Marcus Brigstock.